think what we should talk first about is the Golden Globe winners. So for best uh, drama motion picture, Oppenheimer. I liked Oppenheimer a lot. I don't know if it's one of the best movies I've ever seen, even this year. I did not watch. I didn't uh, get to I watch Barbie. <laughs> Like, Oppenheimer is really cool. Like, I think you would dig it a lot. Uh, so the other nominees for this category were Killers of the Flower Moon, Maestro, Past Lives, The Zone of Interest, Anatomy of a Fall. I've heard a lot of good things about Anatomy of a Fall, but I haven't seen it. I've heard a few things about Maestro. Uh, it's definitely like... Uh, his best work so far of uh, uh, Bradley Cooper. Really? Bradley Cooper? Yeah. Uh, apparently, this is like one of his passion projects. Well, he directed, uh, what is that, Lady Gaga movie? Uh, a Star is Born. Star is Born. We'll go further down here for the best performance by an actress, Lily Gladstone. I believe she was, uh, yeah, Killers of the Flower Moon. Yeah, she's pretty good at it. She's really good at it. They say that she's pretty much the standout. Which is crazy because you have DiCaprio, you have... Mm -hmm. You got all these great actors, you got Fat Damon. But man, I don't know what Leo is doing. (laughs) It's it's not his best performance by long. I also think he's... The character is written to be a lot younger and it's just so weird because I think he's like in... I think he's like closing on 50 if he's not already. And like, the character is like, you're clearly supposed to like when it was written it's clearly supposed to be his 20s or 30s uh, Leonardo is 49 huh yeah hold it it was just so weird to see him with that. but that's Scorsese for you uh, next on this list is the best picture for musical or comedy Poor Things is the winner for that and this movie Man. has been getting a lot of Oscar talk lately is that the one that, uh, Frankenstein is? yeah uh, Emma Stone Oh, uh, William Defoe, Mark Ruffalo. I saw William Defoe got his uh, star on the walk with me. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, every year he doesn't get his uh, star on the walk of fame. He's like, you know how much I sacrificed. <laughs> <laughs> after I heard after he got, it, he was like, I'm something of a star myself. <laughs> <laughs> now we move on to the best performance by an actor in a motion picture, musical, or comedy. Looks like Paul Giamatti's the winner. And for the movie, The Holdovers. So, best performing actor, Killian Murphy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that guy's a good actor. Go. Yeah. The go. Uh, On to the best performance by an actress, uh, Emma Stone won this one. And now we're going to go to best director for a motion picture, which was Christopher Nolan for Oppenheimer. So this year, in 2024, 20 movies turned 20 years old. The first movie on this list is Shrek 2. Uh, Shrek 2. Is that the one with the giant gingerbread man? Yes. Yeah. I love... Uh, I like like Shrek 2. I think it's everybody's favorite, uh, Shrek. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, like, the biggest, like, Shrek fan. Like, I've I've seen them before. They don't remember. They don't all like. They kind of all blend together. Yeah, yeah. But uh, they're great movies. They're a lot of fun. You can do a lot worse. I only remember up to the second one. I don't remember anything past that. For good reason. I think in like the introduction to like the big city when Shrek is gonna go meet with Billy, they have a lot of different references. Like to like. like, Yeah, a lot of different like shops. Yeah, like Versace. Like, there's a shop called Versarchery. Yeah. Not just that, but towards the end, when they're getting arrested, like, into the cell so they don't break the spell, there's, like, a GTA scene where there's, like, on a high-speed chase, and Donkey gets turned into a horse. A steed! And, and eventually they get arrested, and Puss in Boots gets caught with catnip, and he says something like, it's not mine, I swear, or something yeah. like that. So that movie has a lot of iconic moments. Next movie on this list is going to be Harry Potter and the prisoner of azkaban so this is the movie that i've seen least of and it's because i think early on it didn't catch me but honestly uh looking back on it it's one of the it's like the first harry potter movie where it started getting an inkling of darkness in it 
uh, I think this was also a change of directors, if I'm not mistaken. It was originally Chris Columbus for the first two. It's a change of directors. It's the only movie that establishes that they have like lives outside of the books. Mm-hmm. There's like little moments that they shot that aren't in books at all. Like there's this cool little scene where like in the boys' dormitory, they're uh, they're all eating different candies. Tough uh, thing. Makes them do like yeah, animal yeah. noises. There's just a cool little moment that like you can see being part of like the magical world, like it's not in the books. Uh, next on the list, Spider-Man Two. Spider-Man Two. Can I get a refresher on what that was about? Going with Doc Ock, it's the oh, okay. train kit though, where he's like holding back the train. Oh, okay. I fucking love this. It. Honestly, I still think to this day it's the best superhero movie. Even over the Dark Knight, Alfred Molina was fucking amazing. I like it. It's Doc Ock, and the special effects are wild. You like go back and watch that shit. It's still good. Uh, next Dodgeball, a true underdog story. That's that movie forever. I think we all love this movie. Yeah. This movie's freaking hilarious. It's got one of my favorite styles of like comedy, which you don't really see that often. Where like it's just so absurd sometimes. Uh, I remember just wanting to make a spin off of the pirate. You guys would not remember this, but I definitely do. It was bad. <laughs> Next on the list Anchorman, The Legend of Ron Burgundy. I've only seen it fairly recently for the first time, but I thought it was really pretty funny and it still holds up. Scott said Scotch. I'm Ron Burgundy? We got a great cast, too. Uh, I enjoyed it. I still reference it here and there. It's like, you know I don't speak Mexican. <laughs> I enjoy this film. I think it's funny. If I saw this probably recently, I'd probably ensure the comedy still holds up. All right, guys. We're going now to Mean Girls. I feel like Mean Girls is like an anomaly where it acts and talks like a movie for women, but it's just like... There's a lot for everybody there, mm-hmm. which is cool. Yeah, I enjoy this movie a lot. There's even to the point where I, I do actually quote this movie as well. Everybody remembers this movie now. Like Everybody knows it. I think it's it's still a good movie. It's very quotable. I've even quoted it. All right. And the last movie on this list, we have Shaun of the Dead. It took me forever to watch this movie. It took you forever to watch the movie? I think so. It took me a few years, honestly. To watch Shaun of the Dead? Yeah, I don't think I, don't think I watched it right away. I watched this in theaters. Yeah, I was really late to it. What, uh, what year did it come out? 20, uh, 20 years, right? So it's 2004. 20, 2004. But it was you guys that got me into like understanding what it is that they were doing different and why it was good, including like the uh, montages, the dry humor, and like stuff that you could like super easily miss if you weren't paying attention because they're just going to keep on moving on. And you may or may not get it, but that's not the point, you know? 